Welcome to Business Analytics. This is Hari Rajagopalan, and we are coming close to the end of predictive analytics, and we've got a couple more videos left. So we finished descriptive analytics. We are close to the end of predictive analytics, and then we'll move on to descript, uh, prescriptive analytics later on. But let's talk a little bit. We're still in predictive analytics and in time series forecasting, and we're talking about non-linear forecasting, non-linear regression. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to do non-linear regression. We're going to talk about non-linear regression with seasons as categorical variables, just like we did linear regression, except now we have non-linear. And then we'll talk about non-linear regression using seasonal indices. Um, so the questions, you know, a lot of times when, when uh, we look at nonlinear regression, um, people ask, well, how do we know that we have to use nonlinear reduction? How do we know data is linear? And then the more important thing is, what do I, how will the question come for the exam, right? So what should I do for this class? And then the more practical part, once the anxiety of grades goes away, uh, what should I do when this happens at work? Well, let me answer first for this class. For this class, I will tell you whether data is nonlinear or not. All right. And here for regret for this forecasting, we're going to deal with only quadratic. Uh, and as you know, in regression, we have quadratic, we have log, we have exponential, we have different forms, uh, what we call as data transformation. But really what you should do is to plot your data. And if you look at this, a linear data set would increase linearly, right, in proportion, whereas this, in this particular case, this is quadratic. It's increasing in squared terms, okay? So let's look at our data, um, and, and I'll show you how to do this in Excel. The same watercraft data, right? And here's the data, and here, if we actually plot linear, uh, we get an R-squared about 87.26%. And this is the equation. But if we actually look at it from a quadratic perspective, the R squared increases to about 90.77%. We should go and look at the adjusted R squared because now we are looking at not only time, but time squared. And I will talk, I'll show you how to look at this, but it's worth investigating. The quadratic function is worth investigating. So let's go into Excel and essentially build a nonlinear regression model. Uh, you can use data analysis regression. But now we have two slopes. So, you know, the linear regression is easy to understand. Intercept is level, trend is the slope. But when we have slope one and slope two, then it's a little bit harder. And you can also use trend uh, to get the actual values. So let's go to Excel. Uh, and we should look at these three different models and we'll come back to this to show the comparison. So here we are in Excel and you can see we have the nonlinear model. We have the categorical one where we use categories, seasons as categories. And then we have the one with using seasonal indices and then the optimization part. But all of them are pretty much the same. There isn't any different except for the fact that for time period, right next to time period, you have time period squared. And all I did was take this value and square it, right? I've inserted another row and I've squared it. So when I do the trend value, uh, it's time period and time period squared or the regression model. When we do data analysis, uh, the Y range is your regression, sorry, Y range is your actual sales and the X value is essentially the two of them. And once you get that, you get the values, intercept for the time, time squared, and you put all three here, right? And make sure you have your um, MAP and your confidence interval all set up. But let's talk about whether this, how this should actually, um, we know that this is a time squared. For that, we can look at a scatter plot. So let's go ahead and, and kind of set up a scatter plot here. Here's a scatter plot. And you can kind of select right click on the scatter plot and say add trend line. And when you look at this trend line, let's go ahead and remove this. Let's look at this trend line here. 
you can look for a linear trend line, which gives you an R squared and an equation for the chart, right? This is your linear um, trend line. So it's 87%. Uh, you can look at other ones. Here is if you want to do an exponential, that gives you 90.86 logarithmic. That gives you only 66, so definitely not logarithm. Polynomial, order of 2, that gives 90.77. Um, you know, this is 90, order of 3 is 90.96. Order of 4 is a little bit more. But, you know, order of 2, we can start with that, order of 2. You can look at a power function. Again, drops. Uh, you can look at moving averages. Um, so linear versus polynomial two seems to be the most likely one. And so we are using polynomial two. Like I said, again, for this particular class, um, I will tell you if you're going to have a nonlinear data set. Uh, if you look at it, linear, R squared is 87.26. The adjusted R squared for polynomial is 89.69 for the quadratic, uh, which is a squared function. And therefore, uh, this seems to be a better fit, okay? So that takes care of just this, the, the curve here, this curve, right? This um, curve here. And, but uh, we know there is seasonality, and so we can capture the same seasonality using categorical variables. And that's very similar to what you did. And so now your x-axis is essentially all of this and so you see that here so all this will be your x this is your y and you can get a regression equation and you can run it and get that and you can see a very much narrower confidence interval because your mad is about 51.91 it's much smaller than if you do the linear method now if you use seasonal indices again no difference except when you're running the regression uh, you are going to use time and time squared to get the regression. Uh, and then, as you can see here, and then you're going to essentially get percentage of trend, then get the seasonal indices, you get the forecast, right? And then you optimize it by minimizing mean squared error and average should be equal to 100. And you'll and notice these are all now numbers and you notice that the MAP is 1.73%. So this is really, look, look at look at the how small the MAD is and the confidence intervals are really, really narrow, okay? So that's about it. So all the only difference is you take time and you basically square it to do the quadratic function and then you follow the same steps in, as you do in any kind of forecasting method that you have used so far. Okay, so I've gone over this quickly because I'm assuming you actually looked at the videos for the linear uh, regression model, for uh, stat the static regression models, and so you understand how to do nonlinear. So if you want to compare the data set and look at how they have done, you'll notice a basic linear regression model gives an error of about 12.74, whereas quadratic gives you 10.83. This is without seasonality. And Obviously, the quadratic is doing better. Now, if you're going to use uh, your seasons as categories, linear model gives 8.89, whereas quadratic gives 4.89. And then the optimized seasonal indices, this comes to about 12.45, whereas here it comes to about 1.73. So obviously, here a quadratic works much, much better than just a basic linear model. We'll stop right here. And the next video, which is the last video in time series analysis, is how we are going to get a static forecast and use that static forecast as the initialization for the halt winters method so let's let's talk about that and that'll be the very last video there